so Robert, could you maybe explain like what hyperthreading is? I don't think we've actually talked about that on this call, but it's been kind of a focus of, of a lot of the answers. And it seems like it's almost like Intel's like silver bullet in a way. So I'm just curious if you could walk me through that. Yeah, so hyperthreading, uh, the analogy that I usually use um, with people, um, you know, locally when I'm teaching people about computers and what hyperthreading does is I use the analogy of a person. Um, and if you think of the CPU doing all the work and the person is doing all the work, just imagine that a person can do work, can sign documents, can process paperwork with each hand at the exact same speed. So if something has hyperthreading, it can do double the work. So a quad core processor has four physical cores, but if it has hyperthreading, then it will do the work of eight cores. So it doubles the amount of processors that you have effectively. So how does cloud computing uh, play into this? I mean, when we talk about kind of use cases, we're talking about hyper-threading and, and all that, but with the influx of cloud computing and I would say more hybrid computing, what, what, how does that impact the hardware requirements? It, it's gonna be a big question as to, you know, where where is this compute actually happening? Is this at a local level or actually in the cloud? I think, you know, for the most part, everything we're doing right now is in the cloud pretty much, uh, but we still need a lot of local local resources to be able to stream this video at a good quality. Um, so that, that's the big question is, is where is the compute happening? Uh, more and more things are moving to the cloud and I think everybody's working from the cloud in some way, shape or form in this, this current, you know, era that, that, that we're in. Uh, especially with, with everything that, that's been going on. But uh, for sure, everybody's using, you know, some sort of cloud storage, but usually that's just for data. So you're still, you know, likely need that, that local compute power to actually process what, what those files, you know, need to do. Yeah, like Kevin said, I mean, even though you're moving, you're offloading your data storage to the cloud and um, people are still, you know, running multiple applications and, and a lot of those apps, can eat up processing power and take up memory and so you're needing to run zoom or teams and you're needing to also you know multitask and show a presentation and do all these things and all those things take up local compute and memory resources so so what i just heard was don't underbuy right and don't assume that everything is Google Stadia flying life when in reality, you're probably working more locally than you think. And for the people who don't know what Google Stadia is, that's how you can tell I'm the geek on the call. <laughs> All right, so then I guess the logical question is, um, given that a lot of us, uh, certainly everybody watching this and, and most people I think today as we called out are working in the cloud. So when we look at cloud work, what's the hardware that you are gonna want locally that's gonna support that, right? Knowing that there's still demands on your machine. So what do I need if I'm in the cloud all day? Yeah, I, I think, think go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. I think, I think it goes back to our kind of original, you know, state statement that the cadence have been going is what are you doing? So office 365, for example, that's just word, maybe Excel. If you're just doing that, you know, the I3 is going to be fine, but it's going to go back to what are you doing in the cloud and what's, being processed in the cloud versus on your desktop. So it's not really cut and dry, unfortunately, because more and more applications are being virtualized, but that still doesn't mean you don't need that horsepower locally. Yeah, and I think with the migration to the cloud, you also have your local cloud, you know, you have your virtual storage in locally. And, and for those things, you need to make sure that you're reliable, right? Because now you've got all your multiple eggs in one basket. And so for us, you know, we use Intel hard drives, Intel motherboards, Intel processors. And, and one of the biggest reasons we use those high quality uh, and specifically Intel stuff is, you know, it's just, it has such a high reliability rate that we have a very low failure rate across the board, even compared to their, you know, other high market competitors with CPUs and power supplies is, it just, it's very dependable and reliable and you need that as you develop your internal cloud infrastructure. 